everyone, it has been said, there is a spark of the divine. In some, it is fanned into a flame, and mankind is the better for it. But in others, it is snuffed out. And in the darkness that remains, another force begins to stir. A brutal force, a force of evil. Good you were on the scene. We might have lost you. Just happened to be shopping. The boy's mother's outside. Do you want me to talk to her? No, thanks, Amos. I'll do it. You know, he was an athlete. Star of his basketball team. Yes, I know that. Look, Yale, you mustn't take it so hard. Maybe you couldn't save his arm, but you saved his life. I tell that to the drunk who ran into him. I'm sure it'll make him feel a lot better. But I will tell him this. If it weren't for you, he'd be facing a manslaughter charge. No one could have done more. By the way, if you do decide to run for director, you've got my vote. That's the work up on Mrs. Pastic. And Marion Daly called to say she's feeling much better. Oh, I was thought hello. That was good. Oh, get me out of here by four. I promised my daughter we'd go riding. Yes, Doctor. You never told me I had someone waiting for me in my office? Nobody is. Oh, no, my. My old man always told me, when you want something, go right to the top. You're the number two man now, aren't you, Doc? Get your feet off my desk and get out of my chair. Desert Wells Memorial never looked better. Jake's. Fifteen pounds lighter and seven years older. You're looking fit. How's your wife look? She still got that real short blue dress she used to wear? What do you want? My old job back? It's been filled. <laughs> I figured it might be. You docs couldn't last ten minutes without someone like me to tidy up after you, could you? That's right. Well, what else do you want? I thought we meant visit. I'm too busy for that. Now, what is it that you want? Seven years of my life. The ones you took. <laughs> the law, Mr. Jakes. Not me. The law did that. You were responsible. You could have helped me. If I'd lied for you, yes. But you raped and killed somebody. I wasn't about to give you an alibi. You're always good to me, Doc. Treat me like a human being. And you dumped me. Why? I've got a lot of work to do, so... Goodbye, Mr. Jakes. My regards to Mrs. Carrington. Oh, and that, uh, that daughter of yours, Cindy, isn't it? She's what, uh, 14 now, Doc? It's an exciting age for a young girl, isn't it? Huh? 
Did Cindy tell you John called this morning? No. Anything wrong? Oh, just that he finishes his finals on Wednesday, and then he'll be home. Oh, that's good. You all right? Yeah, what? I don't know. You seem awfully quiet since you came home. It's that Teddy Jakes, isn't it? How'd you know about him? Susie called. She hadn't recognized him at first, but she did later. She said you seemed so upset. Uh, he isn't very pleasant company. Well, what did he want, anyway? His old job back. His job? After what he did? Well, he put in his seven years. I guess he figured that he had the right to ask. No, he didn't. Not... Not after the way he threatened you. Anyway, I told him, no, let's forget about Teddy Jakes, huh? Look at her. I'm going to turn the sprinklers on. Yes, this is Dr. Carrington. I'd like to talk to my brother, please. Oh, that's all right. Uh, don't bother. Just tell him that uh, I'd like to have lunch with him tomorrow. Thank you. Keep that coffee coming, Mabel. Try to tidy things up a little bit, will you? Oh, anything you say, darling, as long as it's not full over. I smoke too much. You're my brother, not my doctor. Who is it? My doctor? Tom Haskell of Moodport. Oh, I bet he'd say the same thing to you if he could ever get you in for a checkup. Yeah, well, is that what this lunch was all about? You remember Teddy Jakes? What do you think? Do you know that he's out? Is he back here in town? Well, that's the way it is nowadays. Bunch of muddled-headed, bleeding hard parole board members dumping the garbage right out on the same streets where I pick it up. Suppose I told you that he threatened me. What would you do about it? I could split his skull open, dump him down Sand Canyon. Legally? Nothing. A threat's not a crime. You heard about freedom of speech. What about the man who yells fire in a crowded theater? Now, you're no crowd, Yale. My family is. What happened? Well, nothing really did happen. It was just sort of uh, implied. Well, I'll take care of it. How's that pretty little niece of mine? She's fine. Take care of it how? Well, he's on parole. He's got to watch himself. Anyone who's been convicted of rape and murder, they have to register with you, don't they? I already did. That's how I knew he was out and around. Well, why'd you tell me? He must have known that. You just trust your big brother. You know, I'm as good at what I do as you are at what you do. Maybe better. No contest. I was just curious. I'll come up with something. Okay, thanks.
Show me driver's license and registration, please. I didn't realize I was breaking any law. Don't take it out of your wallet. The car is leased. The papers are in the glove box. Open that glove box now, Mr. Jakes. You stay in here in Desert Well? That's right. And where's that, sir? At the old Loretto. That place been closed for ten years. Well, that explains a lack of service, doesn't it? Huh? You got a sales receipt for that watch you're wearing there? No, deputy, I don't. Would you like to step out of the car, please? Sure. Want to search the car, do you? That's right. Well, you won't find anything. Well, we really won't have to find much of anything, Mr. Jakes. Mission is still on property. They didn't get this watch in the slammer, Jakes. Where'd you get it? Wasdale Jewelers, 41 Maple Lane, Denver, Colorado. Watching out for the kid brother, Sheriff? Keeping my county clean. How, oh, by breaking the law? You're stumbling over my constitutional rights, not to mention the civil and criminal code. I got a library in the penitentiary, lots of law books. I've got seven years to study. That girl you killed. And raped. Raped! Her mother committed suicide six months later. Did you know that? Put her father in a sanitarium. You booked me for that, eh? Hmm? How'd he pay for it? Cash. How much? Uh, well, I, uh, I, I, I didn't think to ask. <laughs> Get him out of here. <laughs> Floyd, why couldn't we just take him outside and stop? Get him out! Nothing at all. Out in his car, hotel room. Where do you stay? The Loretto. The Loretto? Well, that place has been closed for. I know. I know. He's got himself so well covered, I'm not going to throw trespassing at him. Not till I find out exactly why he's in that beat up old flea bag. I suppose you had that place officially condemned. Yale. I don't tell you where to stick your thermometers. I was just trying to help. Listen, I know you're handling this okay. Floyd? What was that? I don't know. What's that? What's that like? Floyd?
Sweetheart, it was nothing but a bad dream. Mom, it was awful. There was a fire. And, and a man, and a, a leg, and he, his face. It's all over now, sweetheart. It's uh, all right now. It wasn't like the stables. Never mind, just try to forget it. Mom's right here, and nobody's gonna hurt you. Now try to sleep. Okay. Good night, love. Good night. She was having a nightmare. I wonder, poor thing. A terrible experience for her. For all of us. It was him, wasn't it? That Jake's. Well, we don't know that for a fact, do we? Oh, I do. Well, he is not going to get away with it. Floyd will see that he doesn't. He'll tie him into this somehow. Never been this close to evil before. To think he's free with your brother, the law in this county. Floyd has to move very slowly, carefully. Jake's is a sick man. Sick? And what do you prescribe, Doctor? Two aspirin to be repeated the next time he he maims and kills. All of a sudden, I'm. I know how victims feel. I don't care if he's sick. I don't want him institutionalized, treated, and pampered the way they... I want him punished. I want him dead. God forgive me if I'm wrong. Sweetheart, we've got to have faith in my brother. He's doing everything he can, I'm sure. Really, so sure. Been a rough day for all of us. Let's get to bed, huh? Why should he stick his neck out anyway? You know he's always resented your success. Uh, he can have my success if he just nails Jake's. You never did tell me exactly what it was Jake's did at the hospital. He was in charge of the crematorium. I didn't know there was one. Uh-huh. For the amputations. They've got to be disposed of. Carson, all right. Well, a tough cocktail, huh? Yeah, it's thrown from his car. I sure wish you'd have seen that car at the past. Well, maybe one of the neighbors did. I already checked. And? Nothing. Well, then how can you ever tie this to Teddy Jakes? I'm working on it. How can you? Under the circumstances, how can you possibly prove that he did it? I don't know. Look, I'm giving that everything I've got. I suppose that's not enough. Listen, don't go getting any ideas, doctor. I'll shove the law down your throat just as soon as his. Maybe you might even prefer it that way, huh? Yeah, hey, Floyd, this is Jonesy. Yeah, I just want to know, you want me to keep tailing him or check on what he just bought in his pharmacy? 
Stay with him. I'll check the pharmacy. Ten four. Is that the charge, Sheriff? The purchase of two dozen disposable syringes? Now, don't get all hot and bothered, Lemon. Harassment always gets to me, Sheriff. And that's what we're talking about. Your deputy's been following my client. Desert Wells is a small town. Their itineraries happen to coincide. Then, uh, let's talk about the illegal search and entry of Mr. Jake's uh, temporary quarters. Come on, Lemon. A violation of the criminal code, as is this false arrest. I got the picture of Mr. Lemon, uh, misunderstanding. Dr. Carrington to the rescue. I'm Mr. Jake's attorney, George Lerman. His attorney for what? No heroin or other junk, but Jake's here bought himself a pile of hypodermic needles. Sheriff, you real disappointment to me. I thought you knew everything about me. And you don't know. What am I supposed to know? Tell him, Doc. Tell him. He's a diabetic. In his prison medical record, two shots a day, 40 units, 20 minutes before meals, since his 16th year. Am I correct, Mr. Jakes? That's correct. Let me warn you, Sheriff. You blatantly violated my client's constitutional rights. If it happens one more time, we'll meet in court. Tell me he was a diabetic. Some lawyers always talk like that, so I'll let him scare you. It's the other one who scares me. I got it. Hello? I have a collect call to anyone from John Carrington. Yes, I'll take it, operator. Go ahead, please. Hi, son. How are you? I have a terminal case of the finals, but I expect a remission by tomorrow. Oh, you'll be coming home then, huh? Oh, uh, well, that's kind of why I called, Dad. See, the team's having this big brawl. Uh, party Friday. So, you'll make it Saturday, then? Assuming my chief backer doesn't blow his stack? Uh, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. Oh, we'll be driving up to the lake Friday night, so why don't you come straight there, John? Not like you were sitting down. A little lower. I know it feels kind of weird. <laughs> Whatever you do for the first time feels weird, right? Okay. You got it. Yeah. There's nothing to it. You got it. See you later. Mrs. Carrington? Yes? I'm sorry. Do I know you? I used to work for your husband at the hospital. We met, sure. You used to have lunch with him every Thursday, correct? Well, that was years ago. You always brought him flowers? I'll never forget that because it was the only place in the hospital that didn't stink to high heaven, especially where I worked. I used to sneak in there to smell something nice and fresh, you know? Really? You had a blue dress. Silky. Very short. I really miss those days, you know? Well, I have to be going. This is getting kind of heavy. Hey, I'll take it for you. No, that's Oh, come it. on. Come on. Sure. I can't tell you how nice it is to see you again. Give up your often, do you? No, no, not too often. Thank you. Now, you be sure and tell the doctor you saw me. I think I'll get a big kick out of it, okay? Uh, I don't think I got your name. Jakes. Teddy Jakes. Mr. Jakes. Don't forget me now. Oh, John, hi. 
How you doing? Hey, John. Yeah. Oh, it's great to see you. Oh, let me look at you. You look good, boy. You smell like a paint factory. <laughs> All right, you have a good semester? What kind of grades you got? Well, they mail them. And I tell you that every year. Ah, that's senility. Mm -hmm. You watch it, you smarty pants. Well, get some work clothes on and grab a brush. Thanks. Hey, how come you're not out on the lake? Oh, well, Bonnie forgot her ski, so I let mine, let her mine for a little while. Well, where's Mom? She's out buying groceries. Great, great. I'm famished. Yeah, you get nothing to eat till we finish this job, so put it in high, boy. Oh. Ah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <gasps> hey, come on now. folks. Is Bonnie okay? Go with your brothers. Go, oh, come on. Go on, sweetheart. Terrible thing, huh, Doc? Of course, it could have been worse. It could have been Cindy. They look an awful lot alike, don't they? You followed us up here. No. I came up to see how the rich, rich folks live. You got it made. House in town, house on the lake. Pretty classy. And that daughter. Tender stuff. She's almost as tender as your wife. And you know how tender she is. Yes, sir. They got a couple of spicy females under that roof. Real lollipops. I know one thing. I could... Oh, damn! Flying into Doc Isley in L.A. Where are the kids? Oh, they're inside. I heard about you and Jake's. Well, what are we going to do? I don't know. Nobody saw him in that boat. I don't care. He was in it. I know it. And it was Cindy he was after. She and Bonnie are the same age, same hair color. That was... But there was no accident. I know. Got an idea. Where are you going? Let's see if I can find him and talk to him. 
Might just be the answer. Position for you. I figured you might. That was a very stupid thing you did today. I could get you for assault and battery. A man of your reputation has to be more careful. You enjoy the game, don't you? Is that what you call it? I call it hunting. Did you ever hunt, Doc? Deer, elk, coyote, rabbit? <laughs> There's good hunting grounds around here. Get you near blood. All right, now listen. This is the deal. Let me finish my point. The sport is not in killing in a watering hole. You gotta give them a chance to run. The sport is in a stalk. That's what I'm doing. Stalking. Jakes, I'll pay you $25,000 to leave us alone. Hmm? To, to get out of the state. To stay out. $25,000. For seven years, that's less than four grand a year. That's below the poverty level. Oh, come on now. That's a whole lot of money to get at one time. Have you get a chance to start a whole new life for yourself? told me about the fire and losing beauty. She's having nightmares. And now there's this thing with Bonnie. Dad, what's going on around here? There's a guy named Teddy Jakes. We think he's responsible for it all. How come? He raped and killed a girl about eight years ago when he was working at the hospital. When he heard that your Uncle Floyd was looking for him, he came to me and wanted me to lie for him so he could have an alibi. And I refused. Now he's out of prison and he wants revenge. He doesn't admit it, but that's what he wants, all right. Did he think Bonnie was Cindy? Uh, that's what we figured. But the police questioned everybody involved. They couldn't even get a description of him. What about Uncle Floyd? He's working on it. But so far, he hasn't come up with anything. Almost finished. Oh, that's good. What do you think is Jake's next move? Who knows? Would it go against Mom? Ah, uh, Cindy. He knows that's the way he can hurt me. Maybe we ought to do something about it. Now, I know a couple of guys on the football no, team. No, you stay out of this now. Dad, this guy has you to heard be stopped. Me. Uh, Cindy, why don't you rub your brother, huh? Okay. The way you talk, there's no chance of him falling asleep. <laughs> Let's go, sweetheart. Hey, you keep your eyes open now. And don't stop for anything till you get home.
for sale. It is money he wants. Well, I could have told you there. The way he looked at me. Like there was something to be devoured. Well, I promise you, sweetheart. He's not going to hurt us again. I'll kill him first. Trying to tell me you didn't put the kid up to this. You think I'm out of my mind? You've been up to something, little brother. I know that much. Okay. I offered Jake some money. You tried to buy it. You had a law against it? Well, I could have saved you the trouble. He had an aunt died while he was in jail. Left him a six-figured bundle. Now you tell me. Oh, well, you were up there in Playland, uh, skimming across the lake in your boat and your... Lake House, Dr. Carrington's tax write-off. Oh, come on, you two. Well, if he's worth that much money, what's he doing in that rat-infested motel? Well, he's going to buy it. That's what he's going to do. Wow, that, uh, that really ties your hands, doesn't it, uh, Sheriff? Makes it a little tougher, you know? Then you got to make sure you don't go outside the law. So what are you going to do, sit back and wait? I've got no alternative. What's going to happen to my family, huh? In the meantime, nothing's going to happen. To no. But if you wait until Jake's breaks the law, it's going to be too late. You want me to lose my job? They'll all say I was protecting my brother's family and forgot about the law. I'll be there before it happens. But you might not be. Never had any confidence in your old brother. Have you? I don't know about that. And we just don't seem to understand one another, do we? Okay. You do it your way. But I am not going to wait. You leave Teddy Jakes to me, you understand? Goodbye, Floyd.
You saw what he did to your kid. Floyd's not going to do it. Not in time, anyway. I know that now. But you can't just go and shoot the man. Nobody lives within a mile of that place. Well, suppose somebody saw your car parked out in front. I was seeing a patient. A patient? Yeah. Who, Jakes? I thought you wanted him dead. I do. But not at the risk of losing you. I got no choice. It's either us or him. Well, you can't do it with a gun. I mean, we've got to think about this. We, we've got to have some kind of a plan. No. I can involve you. What do you mean I am involved? Just as much as you are. I mean, it's a matter of self-defense, isn't it? The man's insane, isn't he? Yes, he certainly is. And he's also a diabetic. I know how to do it. room for a few minutes. I was afraid he'd come back. Uh, probably should have taken more time. Planned it better. You said it would look like a heart attack. Oh, yeah, I know, but Floyd, he's... Well, he's, he's pretty hard to fool. Well, would he think to check the insulin? Yes, he might. He might. What if he never found the body? You could say that he accepted your offer and, and, and then left town. No, it won't make sense. He doesn't need my money after what he inherited. And he's buying that motel. Why should he pull up stakes? Well, anything, just so Floyd doesn't find him. We can think of the rest later. Okay, okay. Why can we bury that body? 
The Eisenbach Ranch. There's an old well out back. Nobody's lived in that place for over ten years. It's perfect. Is he? Yes. Get the lights. Car doors. Oh. Never left town. Of course. I gotta think. We just have to come back. I'll drop his car off the bus station and leave it there. Doesn't it matter if they find it? Might even help. Just be a few minutes before we hit that turn off. What time is it? Three twenty. What's that up ahead? Oh, it looks like an accident. Oh no, it's Floyd's car. Get down. Get down. See us. We can do about it now. We're committed. Throw him in. There's something down there. I wonder if this thing works. Uh, what? That, that oh, uh, rats. Things haven't changed much. There's always been a family of them down there. It scared the devil out of me when I was a kid. How long will it take for the body to, to decompose? Not long. Down there, anyway. It's stuck. Help me. Pull this out. Hurry up. Keep it away from the side. Kids are awake when we get home. What are we going to tell them? We'll think of something, darling. Hey. 
could never happen. Okay? Exercise. So see you later. Okay, so now. Hey, listen, John, if you don't want to go to summer school this year, that's up to you. But I don't think you're going to find a part time job around here to support your tennis habit. <laughs> Same to you. Hey, did you get your new school ring? Good. No, no, everything's fine around here. Yale, would you get that as the pot roast? Oh, hang on, dear. I'll be right back. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see you there. That's okay. We've never really met. I'm a good friend of your folks, Teddy Jakes. Hello. She's a fine-looking animal. Have you had her long? Oh, no. She belongs to a friend of mine. Her name's Lady. She's a little skittish with strangers. The best ones always are. Once in a while, you have to manhandle them, keep them in line. How about it, lady? I could be manhandled, huh? Are you riding? No, just off for a walk. You ride very well. Have you got your own horse? No, I had one for a long time, but he died. Everyone gets old, Cindy. Oh, no, he didn't die of old age. We had a fire in the stable. Oh, wow. It must have been awful for you. Fire is such a painful thing, isn't it? But I bet you and lady will be great friends, huh? Well, I better be getting back. Listen, I was by the house this morning to see your mom. No one around. She's there now. I'll come by some other time. You say hello for me. You tell her I'm back in town, okay? Goodbye, Mr. James. You be careful now. Bye-bye. It's a French Bordeaux that Amos Foley recommended. Hmm. Dad, I thought you were supposed to pour just a little to decide whether you liked it or not. Not for what this costs. Ignore him, Cindy, or you'll never have any class. Oh, is that good? Mm-hmm. Thank Amos. Mm-hmm. You know, Dad, in France, kids would drink wine when they're five. They do, huh? They also speak French. Maybe you ought to take a course this summer. Mmm, that's delicious, we are. Thank you. Oh, I almost forgot. Teddy Jake says to say hello. What? Teddy Jakes. At least that's what he called himself. You saw him? Yeah, I was out riding, and he was kind of wandering around. I almost ran over him. It was kind of scary. What's the matter? What do you want? He just said that he'd been out of town for a while and that he'd stop by to say hello to Mom. Well, what else did he say? Nothing much. He said he'd stop by another time. What's wrong? You guys look kind of funny. How do you know who you were? I don't know. Guess if he knows you, he must know me. I think I've seen him around town. I may have seen him up at the lake once. That wasn't Teddy Jakes, right? Of course not. And who? get Cindy to describe him better. But he introduced himself. He said he was Jake's. You sure? He's dead. He's still managing to tear us apart. Piece by piece. He's dead. I tell you, he is dead. Uncle 
Floyd? Nice indeed. You're not very good at that. I know. Dad says I'm going to break my coccyx. <laughs> Does, uh... Is he home? I stopped by the hospital. He said he was here. Yeah, he's packing. He's going to fly off to one of those two-day medical conventions. Yeah, thanks, Cindy. How's John? Ah, uh, fine. He's coming home tonight. It's Floyd. I just saw his car out front. You stay here. I'm a top top. Well, what you need? Just doesn't sit well with me, Yale. Huh? You know what I'm talking about. What? Well, I was talking to Glenn Greenwald, and he says... Glenn that, Greenwald? I don't think I know him. Well, they own the motel. Oh. Anyway, Glenn's pretty much convinced me that Jake's was serious about buying that place. Yeah? Well, if it means so much to you, why don't you put out some kind of a bulletin? You know, a missing person report, whatever. Might. Very peculiar. A man goes wheeling and dealing all over town and just... Uh, takes off without so much sorry, but I gotta catch leave. a plane. And uh, if I don't leave right now, it's gonna be too late. Sorry? What'd you do with him, Yale? How oh, kind of question is that? Long overdue, and considering he's been gone over three days. Listen, if you're playing some kind of a crazy hunch... You wouldn't have left Margaret and Cindy alone here three days ago. I happen to be chairman of this convention. It's very important that I be there. And, uh, I'm not leaving them alone. John will be here with them. I have to ask. Nobody's more anxious to get rid of Teddy Jakes than you. Something happened to him? Uh, don't worry about it, Cindy. Come on. Happened to who, Cindy? That Teddy Jakes. I thought I heard his name. You know him? I just spoke to him once. Tell him when, Cindy. Yesterday. I met him while I was writing. Teddy Jakes? Would he introduce himself? How else would I know him? Yeah, you... You didn't mention that. You never gave me the chance. Why the change of heart? Did you worried anymore? Huh? You told me to leave it up to you, didn't you? All right, get your things. I'll take you to the airport. It's oh, very nice of you. Salads? Well, maybe it's because they use romaine lettuce. <laughs> Ew, anchovies. I and mean, your brother just loves them. No, oh, he's so gross anyway. I'll get it. Well, it can't be John. It's too early. Flowers, Miss Carrington. Miss G. Davis. Thank you. Cindy? Who is it? Just a delivery. It's for you. Well, flowers from a secret admirer. Mm -mm. It's too heavy. The man said it was from uh, Mr. Jakes. What did he look like? I don't know. Just like a regular delivery guy. He had a brown uniform. Mom, what's going on? Who's Jake's? Uh, I'm going to phone your father. Ew. Yes, I understand. What time will Dr. Carrington be back from his dinner break? Oh, I see. Well, would you please ask him to call his home? Thank you. No luck? The committee your dad heads up has gone out for dinner. Well, he'll call later. I put the eggs and anchovies in. Hope we're going to have more than salad. I'm hungry already. 
Want something cold to drink? No, thanks, dear. Oh, Bonnie called a little while ago. She wanted to know if I could come over later. Mom. Huh? I said Bonnie called. She wanted to know if I could come over. No! Uh, uh maybe tomorrow, hon, huh? Well, your brother's coming home, and I'd rather you were around the house tonight. Okay. Hey, there's a note here. I wonder what it says. Aren't you even curious? Fond memory. Well, why don't you open it? All right, I will. there. What? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm tired and wrong. Please don't let the bills ring. Please don't let it be him. Oh. Hello? What number is this? Yes, that's right. Listen, uh, this is, uh, John Carrington's mother. Is he there? I mean, have you seen him? Well, then would you please go and look for him? Yes, yes, it's very important. I'll get it. No, you stay right here. Hello? I don't think... Somebody give me a hand here. Oh. 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 Jill. You two all right? Oh, what's no. going on? We thought it was your ring. My what? Never mind. You're all right now. That's all that matters. Now, you stay here with Cindy. I have to go out. And don't you let her out of your sight. No. What's going on around here? Do what I tell you. Okay. Do you know where he is right now? Yes, this is his son. What? Yes, tell him it's an emergency. Yeah, thank you, operator. Hello. Dad, where have you been? I, I've been trying to reach you. Yeah, yeah, I've been on the phone. Dad, you better get home right away. Something awful's happened.
Yeah. I'm right here, sweetheart. How do you feel? Hmm? What happened? You were unconscious. And John and I found you and we brought you home. Jake's. He's alive. Yes, I know. He grabbed me. Sweetheart. I thought I was going out of his room. All over now, darling. It's all over. But how? Try to forget it. He was dead. We saw that he was... Yes, he was. And by every law of human physiology, he should still be dead. But, you know, there's, there's some... Some cases where people just don't die. Yeah. I want you to take this, huh? Oh. It'll help relax you. Yeah, sweet. Be good if you can get some sleep. Huh? Uh, uh. Yeah? <clears throat> John is just in the next room, huh? If you need him, I won't be gone long. Where are you going? It's all right, sweetheart. Uh, uh. I'm going to go talk to Floyd. Well, that's crazy, the whole thing. What was she doing there in the first place? What was Jake's doing there? That's why I left him the night he disappeared. In the well, I, I put him there. I gotta get some coffee. You're not making any sense. I thought he was dead. That I killed him. I figured. I just figured... Well, you gave me no choice. So what was I supposed to do, huh? Just stand by and, uh, and let him kill off my family one by one? I was going to get him. I told you that. Why the hell did you trust me? Because I couldn't wait. Because I was desperate. This guy, Teddy Jakes, is so sick. You know Avery Wilkes? Yeah. Poor devil had his arm taken off. Whoa. What's that? That's right, that's right. Well, somehow Jake's managed to get a hold of that arm. And he found a ring that looked like John's. Put it in one of the fingers, put the whole bloody mess in a gift box, and had it delivered to our house, to Maggie. Oh, oh, boy. Can you yeah. imagine what went through her mind when she opened up that box? Floyd. Just, I, I, I don't know how to handle this anymore. All right, listen. Whatever it takes, I, I promise you. We're, we're gonna get him. Uh, there's gotta be some way, some law that. Uh, no, no, I don't need the law. I need you. You. Whatever we do, I, it can't be in Desert Wells, and uh, can't be in the county either. Watch your head. Okay, Have a nice trip now.
office. Dr. Carrington, please. I'm sorry he's not available. He's still in surgery. It's very important I talk to him. I'm sorry, but he'll be in surgery all day. You call back around the city. have one of these in the old lake house any old day. Oh. Captain Mears is a friend of mine. Lease is out during the season, lives here most of the year. Didn't charge me nothing, though. Not when I told him I was bringing up a lovely lady. Floyd, this is all so crazy. I think it's neat. Are we going to stay overnight? Well, I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. Hey, look, you can see Dead Man's Cove from here. What? No, it's just an inlet. It's just what the kids call it. Bonnie and I found some bones there once. Look, it's right over here. You can really see hey, it. Hey, uh, Cindy. Better go on board and stay inside. Uh, your dad doesn't want you to leave the boat till he gets here. As a matter of fact, I'm going to lock you in just to make sure. Mom, what's going on? I'll explain later. Come on, let's get out. How long will it be? Depends, I guess. I'll go on up to the house. I don't know what else there is to tell you. He's a sick man. He threatened your father, and now your dad and Uncle Floyd are going to see that it doesn't happen again. I just don't see why we're here. I told you, Pumpkin, it's, it's kind of a trap. One way or the other, we'll be rid of Teddy Jakes. And Uncle Floyd's helping? Mm-hmm. It was partly his idea. Here. No use starving while we wait. How long will it be? Well, let's see. Uh... Your brother should be halfway up by now. He'll drive directly to the house, and hopefully Jake's will follow him. We're the bait, huh? Jake's supposed to think we're in the house. That's the idea. Hope he doesn't get lost. John's such a klutz sometimes. He'll do just fine. bring my homework anyway, especially algebra. Do I have to do my Latin? I guess not. You tired? A little. Sounds kind of spooky, doesn't it? The way the boat creaks and bumps. I'd rather live in our house. Oh, well, now that was a quick change of mind. <sighs> I thought I'd like it, but I don't. What do you do at the hospital anyway? Mr. Jenks. I guess I've forgotten. I was just wondering how they could hire a man like that. I mean, he had to be weird. Cindy, I don't want to talk about it. 
outside and cold. I wonder where they keep the blankets around here. You know, the more I think about it, the way he looked at me and the way he smiled... Cindy, will you stop it? I'm worried enough as it is. About Joan? About everything. I just wish they'd come. Me too. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. It's still worse. There's nothing to be scared about, Mom. No, I I was just kidding about it being spooky before. Oh, here. They're going to kill him, aren't they? No. No, of course not. Well, then why did Uncle Floyd bring his shotgun? Well, your dad and Uncle Floyd are going to do everything necessary to keep that man away from us. But Uncle Floyd's the law. Couldn't he just lock him up? <sighs> she could. But according to the law, he hasn't done anything. But there's a much older law, one that people follow when they have no other choice. Protecting one's family is, well, maybe it's the first law. You'll understand when you have children. I'll be back in a few minutes. Going to town for some cigarettes. Be back in 10 minutes. the arm, didn't he? I started the fire? Yes. I hate him. Why don't I get you some hot chocolate? He was up there when Bonnie's accident happened. That's right. Could have been me, couldn't it?
once did. Did you see anything? Hear anything? Mom. Dad. Bumping sound from the pier. Oh, the wind must have died down. Cindy! No! You stay away from those windows. It'll start up again. The sound. But I just want to see it. If you can't find the sheriff, get help from anybody you can in town. Hurry! to swim for it. Swim? To the cove, to the shore, whichever's closest. But you... <laughs> Sheriff? Anybody in there, Sheriff? He's out. Where is he? I don't know. Please, mister, this is an emergency. Somebody's been killed. Oh, well, sometimes he stops at the ranger's office. Well, where? Where's that? It's on the street here. Turn left about a half a mile. Thanks. Did he see her? Yes. Where did she swim to? I told him that the closest shore. I... Which direction? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, my baby. It's all right, sweetheart. Get my baby. Yes, yes, I will, sweetheart. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll find her, sweetheart.
Daddy. It's all over. He's dead. Did you all right? What about your mother? Did you find her? Yes, sir. She's all right. Oh, good. Where's Jake's? He's dead. In the water. He's right there! The current's pretty strong. Probably carried him out. We'll dredge later. Skateboard. Oh, it doesn't matter. I have to know a very nice doctor. Oh, oh that's very sweet thing to say. Aggie! In here, love. Hey, what's the good news you couldn't tell me on the phone? You are looking at the new administrative director. Thank you. <laughs> All I can say is I deserve it. You do. Oh, mm, meatloaf's your favorite. Great. I'm going to take a quick shower, huh? Oh, John called. Oh, what do you want? He's broke. Well, that figures. <laughs> We're going to have to up his allowance. The cost of things these days. There goes my new range. I know. Okay, hey, fix us a couple of good drinks, huh? Okay, you got a deal. Mm. Dr. Pierre? Yeah? This is for you. Sign here, please. It's like a box of roses. Kind of heavy for that. <gasps> what is it? What's the matter? Don't you know? If you believe in the goodness of man, then the box contains only roses. But if you believe in a force of evil, it could contain almost anything. <laughs>